Hey everybody, I'm C. Andrew Nelson, founder of Aquatacy, and it's time for the Aquatacy Countdown. 10 Terrible Community Aquarium Fish. These are 10 fish species that, although may make great pets, really don't belong in the community aquarium setting. For the purposes of this list, I've eliminated some obviously bad choices, such as piranhas and electric eels. Instead, I'm sticking with fish that you may not realize are lousy tank mates. And when we're done counting them down, please take a moment to subscribe to the Aquatacy channel and click that little bell notification icon so you don't miss any new videos. Here we go. Number 10, Jewel Cichlids. As the name implies, the Jewel Cichlid is a gem of a fish. Arguably the most beautiful cichlid found in West Africa, with its bright red body covered in tiny jewel-like blue dots, the Jewel Cichlid is a wonder to behold. It's also a strongly territorial little snot, especially when spawning. If you insist on trying to keep it in a community tank, then it needs to be with bigger, faster fish in a large aquarium with plenty of hiding spaces. You might be able to get away with combining the jewel cichlid with Congo tetras and Cynodontus catfish, but my advice would be to keep a pair of jewels in a tank of their own where they can really shine. Number 9. Skunk Loaches Anyone who knows me knows that I love loaches. One of my favorites is the skunk loach because of its interesting look, but sadly, the skunk loach can be a bit of a problem child. They can be intensely aggressive towards other fish, hounding, harassing, and nipping their tank mates. One way to curb this behavior is to keep them in larger numbers. If kept singly, the skunk loach will hide half the time and be a right terror the other half. Keeping a good-sized group in a large tank with fast-moving, short-finned, upper-level dwelling species is as close as most fish keepers get to having the skunk loach be part of the community. Number 8. Bumblebee Gobies Some fish are poor community aquarium candidates due to their behavior and some due to their specialized needs. And then there are those like the bumblebee goby that fall into both categories. The bumblebee goby is a fascinating, entertaining, and attractive fish, yet this diminutive species can be picky, fussy, and belligerent as well. They normally come from brackish waters in the wild, and therefore must be maintained in water parameters that fall outside most community aquarium setups. They require small live foods rather than frozen, pelleted, or flake foods. Plus, their habitat should have lots of broken lines of sight so that this scrappy little goby won't be constantly eyeballing the rest of the fish looking for a puny target. Best kept on their own. Number 7. Bucktooth Tetras When you think of tetras, you don't normally think of vicious thugs, right? Well, meet the Bucktooth Tetra. Here is a fish that is triggered by anything shiny, especially shiny tank mates, which the Bucktooth Tetra takes great delight in stripping the scales off of. They aren't intimidated by larger fish either and will even attempt to shred the scales from big predators. Fish without scales, such as loaches, may be left alone by the bucktooth, but it's much better for the bucktooth itself to be left alone in a single species tank in a group of 20 or more, yes, I said 20 or more, in order to dissuade its bad behavior. Number 6. Ballast Sharks The ballast shark isn't a bad fish. It's not bad at all, really. In fact, it's got a lot going for it as a species. They are sleek swimmers with a strikingly handsome silver and black coloration. They're usually quite peaceful as well, and some say their big dark eyes make them look like puppy dogs. So why don't ballast sharks make good community inhabitants? Well, they're big. Really big. What the pet store doesn't tell you is that that small ballast shark they sell you can grow to be over a foot long. That means they may innocently see much smaller fish as food. They're very gregarious and they need to be kept in groups of five or more. And ballast sharks are incredibly high strung constantly on the move at a breakneck pace, which can stress out the other species in your tank. If you want to keep ballast sharks with other fish, they need to be large enough not to be swallowed and close to the same energy level so that they can keep up with these world-class swimmers. Number 5. Three-Spot Garamis The three-spot gourami is one of my all-time favorite aquarium fish and it pains me to put them on this list. Three-Spot Garamis are gorgeous creatures, especially the blue variety. Watching them glide along elegantly through the water is mesmerizing, to say the least. But as they mature, three-spot garamis can become increasingly aggressive and territorial, particularly with mid-level swimmers and surface dwellers. With this species, it all comes down to the individual. 
Certain specimens remain peaceful their entire lives, while others turn all cantankerous on you. Not saying you can never keep a three-spot gourami in a community setting, just be careful not to combine it with any lightweights. Larger rasboras, danios, and peaceful barbs might do well, along with certain plecos and loaches. Keep an eye on that gourami, though. Number four, Pictus catfish. It's hard not to be captivated by Pictus catfish. With their big eyes, broad fins, streamlined bodies, long whiskers, and polka-dotted skin, Pictus cats command attention. Unlike some catfish in the aquarium trade, these are not layabouts. Pictus cats are active fish, which, in conjunction with their eye-catching appearance, make them very intriguing to someone looking to add a scavenger to their community tank. Here's the catch. Though they are sold as such, Pictus catfish are not scavengers. They are predators, and will quickly gobble up any fish they can fit in their mouth. Bye-bye neons, bye-bye harlequins, bye-bye guppies. So don't keep Pictus catfish with any species that is under three and a half inches in length, and don't keep it with any other catfish unless they are very large. Number three, pea puffers. I challenge you to find any other freshwater aquarium fish that is as cute as the pea puffer. These tiny, adorable spotted darlings originate from India and have been melting the hearts of aquarists since they were first discovered in 1941. Pea puffers have gained tremendous popularity in the last 10 years. Although it is popular, a great many fish keepers have come to realize that the pea puffer is not well suited at all for life in the community aquarium. Because they are small, only about an inch long, pea puffers can be outcompeted for food by larger, faster fish, or become food for them. They also can develop a tendency to nip the fins of slow-moving fish or fish with long flowing fins. These dwarf puffers will not usually eat pellet or flake food and require a variety of live or frozen foods, plus a steady supply of snails, still in the shell, which is the bulk of their regular diet. For these reasons, the pea puffer should have a well-planted tank all to itself. Number 2. Convict Cichlids the fact that the word convict implies being locked up and isolated should give you a clue as to why this fish made this list. The convict cichlid is so named because of its striped body, which harkens back to the iconic striped jailhouse clothing worn by prisoners of days gone by. But the name could just as easily point to the truth that this is a species best kept in solitary confinement. This is the most territorial fish on this list, and one of the most violent towards other species, most notably when it is breeding. Convict cichlids have been known to attack and defeat fish many times their own size. Unfortunately, it is still all too common for chain pet stores to sell convict cichlids to unsuspecting customers as community species. Don't you believe it? This is not to say that you should not keep convicts. On the contrary, given a tank all to themselves, convict cichlids are almost the perfect beginner fish. Extremely robust and hardy, loads of personality, simple to care for, pleasant to the eye, and without a doubt, the easiest egg layer to breed. Just never put convict cichlids in your community aquarium. Ever. And number one, Chinese algae eaters. Talk about the product not living up to the brochure. Chinese algae eaters have been in this hobby since forever. Every store sells them, everybody at the store tells you what beneficial fish they are to have in your tank and how peaceful they are. Why, you can keep them in any freshwater tank under any conditions with any fish you like. They're the best. All lies. Here's the truth about so-called Chinese algae eaters. First, the name is horribly misleading. Chinese algae eaters don't come from China. They're native to Cambodia, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, Myanmar, and Laos. That's strike one. Second, this species only really eats algae when they're young, and even then, it's not the main staple of their diet. That's strike two. And finally, the improperly named Chinese algae eater grows more and more aggressive as it gets older. It also loses most of its interesting markings as it ages, making it a dull fish to look at. As an adult, this species becomes particularly fond of sucking the slime coat off of the other fish in your tank, causing those fish to stress out, become ill, and possibly die. And as those weakened fish try to cling to life, the Chinese algae eater will pounce on them like a hyena and start chowing down. Three strikes, you're out. Though the Chinese algae eater may be the spawn of evil in my book, I will say these things in its favor. 
They are one of the most bulletproof fish I know of when it comes to hardy, healthy species. They are rather attractive in a strange way, especially when they're younger. And they are immensely enjoyable to watch, constantly active and poking around for food. But keep them by themselves, or only with fish that are fast enough to get away from them. And don't ever turn your back on a Chinese algae eater, or you'll be sorry. So, do you agree with this list? If I'm wrong, please leave a comment below and straighten me out. This is just one man's opinion. And if I'm right, tell me why you agree with me. And if there's a species you think should be on this list and isn't, then let everyone know by leaving a comment about it. One lucky person who leaves a comment will be chosen at random to receive an official Aquatacy sticker absolutely free. The winner will be announced in the next Aquatacy countdown. If you liked this video, then please like this video. Subscribe, and until next time, blessings to you.